Hi guys, PD here, welcome to the channel, welcome to another new video. Today we're playing Forza Horizon 4 in VR with Vorpex. Um, this game was released on Steam last night. It's not cheap guys. Um, the um, standard price, standard edition, £54. If you want to buy the uh, Ultimate Edition, Deluxe Edition, you're looking up to £90 for the game guys. Now I would highly recommend you don't buy the game just to play it in Warpex. If you're going to buy the game and you're planning to play it on a flat monitor, you're going to play it anyway on a flat screen, then by all means um, get it on Steam. If you've got the Xbox Game Pass, let me show you here, you can get the game for free anyway. So if you don't plan to play the game in VR, you've got the Xbox Game Pass, you've got the game for free. Unfortunately, the Xbox Game Pass version of the game does not work with the VR with Vorpex. All the Microsoft Xbox Game Pass games are blocked in Vorpex. So just bear that in mind. That's why you might see a lot more interest about the game now it's come to Steam. Now the game is on Steam, it's no longer blocked on Vorpex. So Vorpex can now attach itself to the game. So I'm going to show you now, step by step guide, how to get this up and running. This is the Steam version of the game. I made a profile last night. I played the game for a few hours. Now there's no Geometry 3D in the game. I know a lot of people want Geometry 3D. Geometry 3D is the best way to play Warpex games. I could only find a profile that got the game to work in um, Z Adaptive mode. Um, if you played Cyberpunk, in VR Vorpex, this is very similar. So if you play Cyberpunk and you're happy with the 3D and everything, then you'll have the same experience with this game. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, once you've downloaded the game, you need to run it first on your PC. You need the PC to get all the settings for your graphics card. I would suggest you go into the game settings, go into the graphics options. I've put my graphics settings on medium. I tried the game on higher settings last night and um, there's some stuttering. The main flaws of the game uses like a cloud based profile to activate other players online it gets their scores. So when you're playing the main game you might come across some of your friends in the game and it's taking their scores, taking their names from the cloud and you're racing against them. So when you boot the game up you want to go into the graphics settings, make sure you turn blow off and go to your in-game car settings, turn the FOV to max. Then all you need to do is quit the game. And now we're going to run Vorpex, so click on Vorpex, go to the uh, configuration menu. I made a profile for the game last night. I've not checked the profiles this morning. Somebody might have made a profile to get the game working in Geometry 3D, so we're going to check that now. If I go to local profiles, I don't think there'll be a default profile for the game yet. So this is my profile, it's found. This is the profile I made last night. So if I go to cloud profiles, I'm going to search all the profiles that people have made and uploaded to the uh, cloud. Forza. Okay, we've got um, three profiles so far. I tried this one last night, um, it was not in 3D, it was just a flat screen guys. He's made a new one since, I've not tried this one. And his description says it's clear but Z3D. So this is my profile from last night. I've left uh, a few instructions here as well. Tell you what to expect. I'll explain these as we go into the game. So I need to apply that. And then we're going to boot Steam VR. I'm playing the game on the Oculus Rift S today. I found the Oculus Rift S the best way to play Vorpex games. Also, the Rift S is really good for me to record really nice footage for you guys. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got Steam VR running. I'm going to boot up the game. I'm going to show you my Vorpex settings. And then we're going to um, jump into some gameplay. 
and I'll tell you what I can see in the game. I'm playing the game with an Xbox controller. I've got a message popping up to say Vorpex has attached itself to the game. Okay guys, so we're in the game. Uh, this is immersive screen mode, so basically it's a giant 3D screen. Forza Horizon 4. Press enter to start. Okay, so you can see your mouse pointer on the screen. I can't get rid of that, guys. The mouse pointer, basically, my headset is acting a bit like a mouse, so... Unfortunately, that pointer will be on the screen throughout the video. I'm going to um, start the game, press the A button. Option highlighted. Continue. Option 1 of 5. Control type. Button. I'm going to continue my game from last night. I played for about two hours. Just to make sure it's up and running. Everything is running really nice. Okay guys, here we are in the game and I can see the 3D. It's not the best 3D in the world. But I can see the uh, 3D depth. I'm going to show you my Volpex settings. This profile is based on the Cyberpunk profile. I spent about an hour yesterday. This is an Unreal 4 engine so I tried about seven to eight different profiles I could not get any geometry 3d to work there was one profile that when I uh, when I boosted the game up in my options here I could see geometry 3d but there's no option to um, turn the 3d on so basically I could see 3d geometry in the menu but there was no 3d geometry in the game and now that's the type of profile we need to try to get to work. So for now, I'm using this um, Cyberpunk profile. Z Normal Mode, I would not recommend Z Normal Mode. Um, when you're inside the car, when you're driving the car, it feels like the car's stuck into the road a little bit. It feels like the road comes up to the bonnet. So I found Z Adaptive Mode to be the uh, best way to play the game. Also, I put the uh, 3D strength on to maximum. I've not touched anything else really. I've not had to tweak anything. At the moment, um, this is like a giant 3D screen. If you want this to be more immersive, if you're playing the game and you can still see the size of the screen and you don't like that, change this here, look. Change the screen distance. Zoom all the way out. And that will make the screen close to your eyes. So for now, I'm leaving it on my uh, default setting of 40. You can also play the game in cinema mode. Cinema mode is still 3D. We've got a smaller screen. And you feel like you're sat on a couch. Playing on a giant 3D monitor. Now, full VR mode does not quite work lock. I would not recommend full VR mode. There's a setting I changed in Vorpex to make the game really sharp, guys. Go into more stereo 3D settings. Depth of field, turn that off. If you put that on, the game's really blurry, so turn that off. That's all I've changed, really. So I'm going to do a couple of races. I'm going to play the game in the third person mode, which you can see now. I'm also going to play the game in the cockpit mode. And I'm going to tell you what I can see. I'm going to tell you how good the 3D is. How bad the 3D is. That sort of thing. So now I've shown you my Volpex settings. I'm going to go back to my desktop and record my desktop. So you guys get a really nice video to watch. I'm going to show you my options before we start the race. I just did a race. Um, check my video recording. And I had the um, Steam logo on the screen. So 
I'm going to redo the race and I'm going to um, show you my settings before I do that. If I go into the video settings, look, I've got the um, quality on medium. I noticed in the last race there I had a bit of stuttering. I'm going to turn some of these off, turn them down a bit more. Make sure blow is off. I'm going to turn all these off. Reflection quality, I don't really need that, so. Windshield reflection, turn that off as well. Mirror quality, keep that on low. Lens effects, let me turn that on to low as well. Turn that off. Go back, save that. Okay, so the game needs to restart. Okay, guys, so the game's rebooted. I'm back in the main menu, back in the graphic settings. Here, I've turned the driver camera, that's inside the car, FOV to max. Feel free to mess around with all the cameras as well if you want to. Okay, let me go back to the map. Now, I need to go back to the race I was going to show you. Um, as you can see, my head is moving the cursor on the screen. So my HMD acts like the mouse pointer. So for this part of the game, when you use the map, guys, use your mouse. Use your mouse to um, select the location and then you have to hit the enter key to go to that location. That's the only time you need to use the mouse and keyboard really. Okay guys, sometimes these uh, cutscenes stutter, I don't know why. Okay, now the game's 3D, all the stuttering has gone. We're going to start the race. I'm going to jump into the cockpit. Okay, we're inside the cockpit. And I'm going to explain what I can see here. So, the outside of the car is all in 3D. This feels like I'm playing Dirt Rally 2, Project Cars 2, that sort of thing. I can see the 3D in the distance. The car itself though is flat. So the interior of the car is flat. There's no 3D depth, you can't look around the car. You've got a static camera looking out the windscreen. You can't look to your left or right. Also, it's a static screen as well, so you can't actually look around the cockpit. You've got a static screen looking out of the window. So unlike a, a normal VR racing game, where you can look around the car, and the car's all in 3D. This is like a 2D cockpit with a 3D environment outside the car. But as you can see, it does look amazing, it's running really fast and it's running really smooth. Now normally when I'm doing these races I tend to do the main events third person mode so I can see my car from outside. That gives me a bit more leeway to judge the corners inside the car because it's so fast guys you really struggle to um, get these turns look so I tend to play the game in cockpit mode when I'm just going to events 
So right now I'm right at the back of the pack. So I'm going to go back into um, third person mode. You've got different camera modes as well. You've got like, uh, you can get closer to the steering wheel. You've got a bonnet cam, bumper cam. So I'm going to restart the race in this mode. Try to get a good placement. Okay, so we're going to do the race again, this time third person mode. I like to do the main events in this mode guys. It lets me see more of the track. This game is really fast. And having the extra view distance really helps. Now every now and then there's some weird artifacts that might appear on the game. Um, I think it's like a, a shader to do with the, the windscreen. Some sort of uh, weather effect. Every now and then you'll get like a 2D effect on the screen. You'll notice it when you see it because you'll see uh, weird textures in the trees and the landscapes. And if you're in cockpit mode you'll see it on the windscreen as well. It's very rare though, I played the game for a few hours last night. I only saw it a few times. Gameplay wise, this looks really nice and clear. There's no blur, it's super sharp. I've not tried the game on the Quest 2 with virtual desktop or link cable. I tend to find Vorpex games work best on the Rift S with the direct link. This is one of those games, the more you play it, the more you get to really appreciate and love the 3D effect that's going on here. Like I said, the 3D really stands out of these hills. And you can see the bumps come in. The game's running super fast at the moment, super smooth. Every now and then there's a dip in performance, but that's due to the uh, cloud profile downloading all the races. Okay, first place. And we beat Zim. Okay, nice. I'm going to try and find off-road racing. Dirt rally, road racing, danger sign, dirt racing series. Okay, let's do this one. So highlight it with the mouse. Press return. And I've got a waypoint now. Okay, I'm going to go to the event inside the cockpit. Okay, here we are. There's him. Okay, again I'm going to race in third person mode. Okay. Now, if you do get a Steam version of the game, you will need the, uh, the Microsoft account to activate it. This uses the uh, same account you use for the Xbox Game Pass. So just bear that in mind, guys. Yeah, the uh, 3D on these um, street races look really, really cool. This feels more like uh, an arcade game than a, a sim racer. 
So if you're a sim racing fan, I would probably say stick to a certain course there, project cars to that sort of thing. If you're looking for a fun arcade game with some cool 3D effects, and you're going to get this game on Steam anyway then, this is a no-brainer. Also, a game like this, because it's not true VR, you're not going to get any motion sickness. Because basically you're looking at a 3D screen. So this is very similar to when you go to um, a cinema and you watch a 3D movie. Also, keep an eye out in the Warpex card profiles. Somebody might find a, a 3D geometry profile that works for the game. Okay, guys, I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to do. I'm going to try and find one of the single player unlocks. Okay, guys, I'm going to show the um, stunt driver before we finish. Uh, this is one of these story campaigns. Really, really cool in VR with Opex. Okay, I'm going to plot course. Again, we're going to um, make our way to the course in the copy mode. In 200 meters, turn left. I'm going to do this one in first person mode inside the car. It's really scary when you get to um, the brows of the hill. I keep finding myself trying to look over the over the hills. You get a really nice sensation of the drop here as well. The 3D is really really good here. Turn sharp right. Oh, here we go off roading. Okay, so we're entering the story mode. You have arrived at your destination. Right. So you're it, are you? The stunt driver. Joel vouches for you, so I suppose you'll have to do. Get in your car and get over to Broadway. We're setting up there. Now, this is one of the fastest cars in the game. And this is where the right. 3D really Broadway. pops out. And step on it, yeah? We don't want to lose the light. Um, it's hard to explain, but it feels like the faster you go, the more the uh, the 3D is stretched, if that makes sense. You know when you see these sci-fi films and you see the spaceship warping into the distance and you get that um, effect on the screen where it warps? That's kind of like the effect you get in this game. Okay, let's go. We're inside the cockpit. Right, off to Broadway. And step on it, yeah? We don't want to lose the light. Now this game is really fast in VR with Vorpex guys. This feels a lot faster than your native VR racing game. I can tell you that. And it's really easy to um, come off the track. Lose your footing. This car feels so powerful. I'm using the racing line to my advantage. You made it. That was quick. Uh, right. Let's get everything set up. You're going in at the deep end. But at least you look the part now. This is a classic car escape. The hero's being chased by a jet and escapes by jumping through an old windmill. Don't ask. If you're as good as Joel says, this should be no trouble. Hey, remember to breathe, kid. 
Just don't let it get away from you. I'll talk you through it. You'll be fine. Okay, let's go. Hook it left, but keep your foot down. Wow. Okay, that's cool. So we're racing a jet. in a jet plane. So what? You just keep that needle in the red. Maybe do some evasive maneuvers. This speed is crazy, guys. It really is. And the baddies overshot you, and your hero is safe for now. Good. This is all good stuff. Don't oh. relax, kid. We're not done. Keep it loose and fast up the hill, then back down. Still got the jump to do. The road's blocked off ahead, so you're going to cut across the field. They'll add something in post. Crashed alien ship or something. Here we go. It's all marked out for camera coverage, okay? Big jump. You just line it up, floor it, and pray. Hey, eyes forward. Ignore the camera. Try to look heroic. And that is a wrap, everyone. That is a wrap. Okay, guys, if you want to um, try getting this game to work yourself with 3D geometry and you want to make your own profile, you need to find a game that uses the Unreal 4 engine and you need to create your profile based on that game. Now, a lot of it will be trial and error. I've made a few videos on doing that myself, so check out my other Vorpex videos. You'll find one where I made a custom profile. Really easy to do. All you really need to do is know where the game's .exe file is stored on your computer. Now, if you're on Steam, it's stored in your Steam library. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to hit my little bell. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.